Hey everyone, my name is Rune Patel, and in this YouTube video, I wanna share a little bit of progress on a fun little project that I'm working on. So as you can tell from this title, I'm trying to build my own pair of camera glasses. Basically what happened was I saw the Meta Ray-Bans get released, and I thought that it'd be really cool if there was a open source, tinker-friendly version that, so that people in the building hobbyist community could work on it and sort of iterate and make their own camera glasses. So that's where we begin with this story. I honestly didn't know how to start until I was reached out to by PCB Way, who are the sponsors sponsors of this video. You can check them out in the link below, but PCB Way is the one-stop shop for awesome PCBs, getting everything high quality in a timely manner. Uh, they've been awesome with supporting me with this project and I can't thank them enough. So before I dive deeper into the video, I do want to note that this only covers three of the initial design iterations that I've done so far. I still have a lot of work that I'm doing to make this a fully fledged project that's done open source and able to reveal to everyone but here's where I'm starting off. I'm also really new to PCB and working with like SMD components. So I took it really, really slow, especially with these first three iterations. I'll take it over to editing Varun, who'll go over some of my photographs from my sketching journal and why I made some of the design considerations that I did. A sketch that I drew of this initial design, really not much to look at here. It's just a sort of idea that I had. I wanted the ESP32. Um, because I didn't want it to be a super bulky system. So if you look at the initial prototype that I'd created with a Raspberry Pi Zero, you can see it's really bulky even though you get pretty decent camera quality. So this is the first version of the board. Um, I call it test board one, if you will. And basically I just made it so I understood what you need to make an ESP32 S3 just work. So it's just a couple of, of jumper resistors, a couple more resistors, some capacitors, a voltage regulator, and a USB-C. I'm really bad at doing like SMD soldering on a hot plate, so it took me a couple tries to get this right, especially with the USB-C connector, but thankfully everything is finally working. I can flash code, it hosts a web server, it works great. Now the point of version two was to take the what I learned with just making the ESP32 work and then adding that camera functionality. So I referenced the ESP cam datasheet really heavily. The second iteration of the glasses basically just copied an ESP32 cam schematic and all I had to do was really just flip the pins on the connector and then add solutions for powering certain pins. So this is 2.8 volts and 1.2 volts as you can see here with the ESP32 cam. And then some other stuff for the uh, I2C data lines and the reset, I replicated that here as well. Now I can't thank PCB way enough because this PCB came in so quickly. I had it done at the beginning of the week, had it in my hands at the end of the week. There were a couple issues with pinout on the CSI connector. Sometimes I thought it was flipped, I, I thought it wasn't flipped. I had it right the entire time, but I'd really tripped myself out while I was making the schematic. Other than that, I really only had to add the additional capacitors and resistors and make the board just a little bit longer. So here I'll share some footage of what it looks like when I was streaming it. It's honestly not that bad. It just kind of sucks in low light and sometimes there's latency because of the stream. Now, if you're looking at this schematic, you might notice that there's one big issue and it's that I am using the SPI pins that the ESP32 uses for the octal uh, pseudo static RAM which doesn't allow for me to take in bigger frames or higher quality images. The issue I had was that I was trying to enable this OP pseudo static RAM on my dev module, but this wasn't working because in my schematic, I was using uh, IO pins 35, 36, and 37, which are used by the SPI according to the data sheet, which I should have read. So this leads us into version three. Side by side, version two and version three are the exact same thing with the pins that they use, except for pins 35, 36, and 37, I think are not used in version three because they're used by the Octal SPI on the ESP32. Pins 35, 36, and seven are finally free to be used by the pseudo static RAM. And I switched over these pins here a little bit to the left. So this allows me to get slightly better image quality and increase it to a higher resolution if I need to do that later on. Just something small, but it helps me clean it up before I get deeper into this project. And yeah, that's basically where we are with this project. It's really small steps that I've taken, but I feel like I've learned an insane amount about reading these data sheets, getting everything soldered together onto the printed circuit board, putting in the order, doing design considerations when I'm routing, and I've learned a lot. So looking into the next three iterations of the project, I definitely need to make this a lot smaller. So I was thinking about using a double-sided PCB to take the, the components that I have right now and make them basically into half the size. It would also be cool if on one side of the glasses, I had the camera on the ESP32, and on the other side, I had the battery, uh, the battery management system, and an SD card slot. If I do something like that, I definitely have to 3D print my own frame of glasses instead of just attaching them to my glasses already. Furthermore, I also might try using the ESP32 S3 Pico 
which is a smaller version of the module that I have, and it still allows me to have pseudo static RAM, about eight megabytes. So I can still do what I want it to do, but in a smaller package. Also, I tried testing this out with an OV5640, but because of the heat that it generates, it creates a lot of issues and a lot of noise in the output image. So maybe I can design a solution that has better thermals for passive cooling. And yeah, that's really where I'm at with this project. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you PCBWay for sponsoring this video. And check out the link in the description for any important links that I've talked about in this video. And uh, stay tuned for more updates.